Let's start off by creating a simplified model of what we are looking at. On the right side of our screen, we see Jill standing on Earth looking through her very fancy telescope. On the left side of our screen, we see a crude model of Supernova 1987A. In the center of this model, we see a star. Surrounding that star, we see a ring of compressed gas. Finally, we see that this compressed gas is, of course, some distance away from the star. Lastly, in 1987, astronomers observed this star going supernova. As it went supernova, it generated huge amounts of light in the visible ultraviolet and X-ray spectrums. That light raced away at the speed of light in all directions. Some of it traveled straight to Earth, some of it traveled to the ring of gas, where the ultraviolet light ionized the gas and caused it to fluoresce, or in other words, to give off light of its own. This glowing of the ring was witnessed on Earth eight months after the supernova event was witnessed. With our model, we can perform some simple geometric analysis. We start by identifying key points. We have the star that we will label S, the top of the ring labeled R, and the Earth that we will label E. With these three points, we can create a triangle. Because I want to keep the math simple, I intentionally arranged the model to create an isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle is a special form of triangle where two sides have the same length. In this case, the two sides that are equal are the lines that connect the star to the Earth and the ring to the Earth. Using geometry terminology, line segments RE equals line segment SE. Let's do a quick simulation. The supernova event sends two bundles of light racing away. The ring fluoresces, sending its light to Earth. And I will pause here as the first light bundle arrives to Earth. Now the reason I want to stop here is because I want to add a fourth point to our analysis. That point is point X. Now you will note that where I placed point X is at the location of the second bundle of light when the first bundle of light is received on Earth. So why is X so important? It's not like Jill can hop into a spaceship and measure the distance. In order for her to measure it, she's going to need to know a few things. First of all, she will need to know how fast the second bundle of light is traveling. And second, she will need to know how long it takes for it to arrive. From that, she would simply apply the formula distance equals rate or speed times time. The question of how fast is fairly straightforward to solve. Jill knows that the second bundle of light is just that, it's light, so it's obviously moving at light speed. Now all she has to do is measure the speed of light during her wait. Solving for time is easier still. All she needs is a stopwatch or a calendar. In this case, I would recommend a calendar as the second flash took eight months to arrive. When Jill measured the speed of light in 1987, she observed that it traveled 300,000 kilometers per second. She also knows that it took eight months to observe the light traveling from point X to the Earth. Now, if you take 300,000 kilometers per second, multiply it by 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day, and 240 days in 8 months, that gives us 6.2 times 10 to the 12 kilometers, or 6.2 trillion kilometers away. Okay, let's do some geometry with what we already know about XE. First of all, recall that we have already determined that XE equals 6.2 trillion kilometers. And if you recall before, that because we were using an isosceles triangle, RE equals SE. Now because the second bundle of light traveled SR and RX in the same amount of time that the first bundle of light took to travel SE, we know that the sum of those two, SR plus RX, equals SE. Given that X lies on the line RE, it makes sense that if you add up the distances from R to X and then from X to E, it would equal the total distance of RE. In this step, we need to recall the previous three equations. 
First of all, recall that SR plus RX equals SE and that RX plus XE equals RE. However, RE and SE also equal each other. That means that SR plus RX also equals RX plus XE. In this next step, since our goal is to solve for SR, we need to do a little bit of algebra. What we're going to do is we're going to subtract RX from both sides of the equation leaving us with SR equals XE. Now because we know the value of XE, we can conclude finally that SR equals 6.2 trillion kilometers. Because we know that RS must equal XE, and because we know that XE is known, this means we cannot, I repeat, cannot arbitrarily increase the size of RS. This is the key concept in understanding what is wrong with Shane's proof? If we do increase RS as Shane did at 3 minutes and 42 seconds into his video, we must note that the rules of geometry still don't change. In other words, RS must equal XE, and XE still equals 6.2 times 10 to the 12th kilometers, or 6.2 trillion kilometers. Now, the problem with this is that it ultimately results in some really funny math. I call it 1 equals 2 math. In this case, it equals 1 equals 784. Of course, 1 does not equal 2, and 1 definitely does not equal 784. It should also be noted that if we were to just change XE, that that would mean that instead of 8 months for us to see the light as it traveled from X, it would take 784 times that, or 516 years. This, of course, is not what we actually observed. This is why this is not true. I believe that the reason that Shane is having problems with this is that he believes that what he sees through the telescope is what must have happened in the past. And to a degree, he's completely right. Uh, I mean, if, if we were to show uh, an unchanging speed of light, then what he sees in the telescope should exactly be what happened in the past. So we're going to do two demonstrations, one where the speed of light doesn't change, and one where the speed of light does change. Okay, so the first thing we're going to see is the supernova flash, the rings flash, and then in our telescope we're going to see the supernova flash and the rings flash. Note that they happened at the same rate. Okay, and for our final demonstration, we're going to see the supernova flash, the rings flash, the speed of light will slow down, and then in our telescope we're going to see the supernova flash, and then the rings flash. Now this is, of course, how it is possible to see something in your telescope that is different from the past. And of course, when we change the speed of light, it changes what we see.